Hey there, everybody. Hope you're doing well. This is Christian over at Front. And I'll be kicking off in just a couple of short minutes here. Still waiting for some more folks to trickle in. It seems like we already have about a dozen people online. If you want to chime in, uh, there's a chat along the side here. You can say your name, where you're visiting in from, and maybe what company you're with. Awesome. And throughout the presentation today, the chat will be a great place to just leave any question, questions that you have on the fly. I'll leave time uh, toward the end for Q&A also. Um, but while I'm demoing front, happy to kind of uh, focus on certain things that grab your attention. So feel free to utilize the chat as much as you would like. Awesome, looks like we have Canada, Los Angeles, San Francisco. A lot of West Coasters so far. Well, with that, let's go ahead and get started. Again, thanks for joining me today. My name is Christian. I'm a product specialist here at Front. I've been at Front for about uh, two years now and looking forward to just giving you a high-level overview today. Essentially, what we have on the agenda, first, I'm going to go through a little bit of the history of Front, why we got started, um, the problem that we're really out here trying to solve, uh, and kind of with that, how traditional email practices might be slowing you and your business down. After we cover that, I'll go ahead and share my screen and start to walk through the product itself, leaving time at the end uh, for a little bit of Q&A. Nice, there we go, East Coaster in Connecticut. Thanks, Mike. So Front, as you all may know, uh, is the inbox built for Teams. So obviously, email's been around for decades now, but it was really created for the one-to-one -one use case. So replacing snail mail by giving you an electronic way to send mail from one person to another person. But obviously, over time, uh, a lot has changed, and email has become the hub of business communications. Uh, but even though that's changed, the inbox hasn't really changed. So you see legacy email clients like Outlook and Gmail um, looking not too different than they have over the past couple of decades. Uh, so in other words, inboxes haven't necessarily kept up with the change from the individual use case to the team or uh, business use case. And it's starting to reach the breaking point where um, you know, not only is email needed for internal communications, also customer communications. And so there are actually dollars and cents tied to your email communications in many cases. Now, there are some fail-safes that traditional email clients have, like distribution lists for copying multiple people on a, um, on a distribution group type of thread, having shared mailboxes and Outlook, Obviously, forwarding, CCing, and BCCing, including other apps in your tech stack, and even having emails about emails internally, which contributes to that overall issue of email overload. Um, so even though we're trying to hack together all these solutions, it really does eventually become a bottleneck for growth, uh, where the tool is no longer enabling you. It's actually getting in your way. And beyond the frustration that can cause it actually, like I said, can affect your bottom line um, from duplicating your efforts, missing opportunities that slip through the cracks, if they go unresponded to or completely just missed. Um, breaking up customer conversations, which also dovetails into you know making the handoffs a little bit more difficult if you need to transition you know, a customer's point of contact over time. And also in a remote work setting, um, it's difficult to have visibility into what's happening around customer communications. And in our research, we found that you know the average knowledge worker spends about 13 hours uh, per week on email, which means 28% of their work week is emailing. So if this is something that's not um, 
you know, resonating with you on these terms, I think we can all agree it is taking up a lot of time. And that's where Front came along about seven years ago as the first team inbox. It was really built for business use, enabling you to centralize all of your communication channels, um, make sure that you can have a task-based approach to handling your messages so that everything gets handled, nothing slips through the cracks, uh, enabling supervisors to have visibility into threads in a remote setting, and also integrating into the rest of your productivity tool stack so that you're not context switching constantly between different solutions. And even though every single customer that we have and company is different um, across industries, across verticals, a lot of companies are sharing or were sharing these difficulties before coming to front. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and um, share my screen and start to dive in to the product itself. Great. So everybody now should be seeing my screen. And I wanna draw your attention over here to this team workspace. First, I'll be giving you kind of a lay of the land of these different panels, as we call them. Uh, and then I'll talk about kind of the life cycle of the message coming into a shared inbox and how that dovetails into your personal workspace up here. But I'll leave this collapsed for now. So as you can see, I've created this kind of mock-up sales team workspace with various channels attached. So we have some social media channels like Facebook and Twitter. We have some email channels. We can think of this as an operations at email address. This as a sales at email address. We have one channel for live website chat and another for SMS, so text messaging through our uh, SMS partner Twilio. But I'll focus first just on this sales inbox here. So this is an email inbox. You can think of it as a Google group in Gmail, uh, distribution list in Outlook, or something similar where everybody is copied on messages coming into this inbox. Now today, you might have some BCC going on internally to figure out once a message comes into this shared inbox, who's actually going to follow up first, who's going to be held accountable over time. So let's look at this message from Lisa. Lisa emailed in to sales at earlier today, and you'll notice here that this message comes in as unassigned. So we can automate the routing of messages, but I'll just show you manually how, if I'm looking at this inbox, I can go ahead, take a message and assign it to myself. And other folks on my team will see a notification saying this message has been assigned to Christian. If I move over to the assigned queue, this was an older message, so it might be further down. There it is. You'll notice that in blue, each of the assignees, so my colleagues who are assigning, who are uh, owning each of these messages is highlighted in blue. So at a glance, if I'm a supervisor, I can tell who's owning which message, um, what the status of it is, if they're currently drafting it or not. Here's a draft up here that Hugo is working on. And in my personal workspace, this message will be viewable in this assigned to me section over here. So it was unassigned, now it's been assigned to me, and you'll notice that the assignee is always designated up here in the upper right, as well as the inbox that the uh, message came from initially. So from here I can go ahead and start a reply. For FAQs, or frequently asked questions, I can just populate this with a canned response. Let's just do this status request. And from here, I could go ahead and send an archive, which would send the message to Lisa and close out this thread for now. So if Lisa were to respond, I would still be the assignee, the message would reopen, um, and I would continue the conversation. So there's no lack of continuity there. Archiving is basically a temporary state of closing it out to indicate to my teammates and my supervisors that no further action is required at this time. Uh, but it might not always be as simple as populating with a canned response and sending and archiving. There might be times where before we draft something, we actually need to call in a colleague to help us. So maybe it's Vishal on my team who I know is familiar with adding users. 
You'll notice that I can actually invite colleagues as participants to the conversation. And each participant that I add will then be able to read the context of this thread and comment back and forth internally with me in real time. Beyond commenting, they can also do things like share files or even populate the comment field with a unique Zoom link so that we can chat face to face in real time. Another thing that we can do with other, other participants that are added to the thread is if I do start a draft, I can share this draft with the participants. And this actually becomes a live document. So Vishal and I could actually trade off in real time, making edits to this draft um, before sending it over and archiving. So let's say made our edits. I can then go ahead and send and archive this message. Other send options I might want to consider are sending later. So if I'm working at night and I want to send tomorrow morning, I can schedule it to send at a later time. Or I can send and snooze. And this will send the message now, but allow the message to reopen on my ends at a certain time, maybe tomorrow morning, to remind me to follow up again with Lisa on her status request. For now, I'll send an archive. And that will move this message out of our assigned queue, out of my assigned to me, into the archived state. I'll pause there. Um, any questions so far about the life cycle of a message that's coming into a shared inbox? Feel free to write in. Otherwise, I'll keep moving right along here. So you'll notice in our personal workspace, there's a few different sections of the personal uh, inbox. If I just have inbox selected, it's going to share, or excuse me, show everything here. But if I expand it, I can click in and just view the messages that have been assigned to me. Messages shared with me are um, messages or threads in which I was at mentioned as a participant, so called into the conversation to help out. And then internal discussions is essentially like a chat room. If I can invite colleagues, set the conversation topic, maybe quarterly business review, and start So this is kind of similar to uh, Gchat or Google Chat in Gmail or Microsoft Teams in Office 365. The idea is to keep our internal conversations separate from our customer communications so that we don't kind of clog that funnel or clog that um, channel of communicating with our customers. We know what to prioritize and where these different conversations are living. Lastly, my individual inbox is going to be my Christian at frontapp.com. Essentially, this is your personal inbox. And unless you assign something out of it, unless you call somebody into a conversation as a participant, this will be private to you. So there's no concern about breach of confidentiality. This is your private inbox unless you choose, for example, to take a message. I'm reopening this one. To take a message like this one from Randolph, and actually move it into a different inbox, like operations or sales, where my team can then view it and triage it accordingly. So that's kind of the breakdown of the personal workspace. But you'll notice whether I'm operating out of shared email, shared Facebook, SMS or text messaging, even Twitter and website chat. The user interface is actually pretty similar throughout. So you'll have that continuity of workflow. In any of these channels, I could still leverage commenting, as you can see here. I can leverage assignments. Uh, and I can also move messages between different inboxes, depending on which team needs to view and triage them. Beyond the actual inboxes, 
uh, I think it can be helpful to categorize messages by type, by customer, and that's where our tags come in. So the way to think about tags is that they're pretty much synonymous in Gmail with labels or in Outlook with folders. So let's say Hector is writing us in about a partner opportunity, and he's from our customer final production club. So what I could do is create a unique tag, for this customer final production. I can make this tag private to myself or public to the team so that everybody can use it. I can label it with either a color or an emoji. And then I can choose to nest this tag under a master tag or master folder, like maybe customers. For now, I'll just go ahead and create that. And you'll see it pinned to my workspace here. So one way I could find messages from this customer would be just to click in to this tag or to type the word tag with a colon. And then our search bar up here would start to suggest different tags. Clicked here would display all those messages from this customer. Now, I know in Outlook, you can move messages to folders, but a message can only exist in one folder at a time. Um, in front, you can actually add multiple tags to an email. So this is about um, our customer final production, but it's also about a partnership opportunity. So maybe I want to add another tag for a partner. I can add by type, by urgency, uh, by customer, as many tags as I need to um, so that I can find it easily later on. Now, obviously, over time, the more tags that you have, you might be thinking, well, that sounds a little bit tedious if I'm manually adding a tag every single time. Obviously, once a tag is created, um, you can quickly search for it, and it'll show up here, which speeds up the process. But what I want to show you now is just how you can actually start to automate certain workflows to save time. I think we saw earlier how um, folks are spending a large chunk of their work week on email. So part of what Front's trying to do, beyond make it more collaborative, which we've talked about a little bit through comments and assignments, is to automate the manual workflows that are slowing you and your team down so that you can spend more time with your customers on the valuable activities that really matter the most. So I'll navigate now to my settings. There's an old picture of me. And if I go down to my sales team workspace, I can click Rules. And what I'll do here is add a team rule. You'll also see uh, I can add an SLA rule, a service level agreement rule. This would be more of a time-based rule. So I'll show that later. For now, I'll just add a simple rule, auto tag for that customer final production. As you can see from the layout here, our rules engine is very easy to administrate. There's no need to have any coding acumen or anything like that. So you can easily change them on the fly, um, stack them to further automate your workflows. And it's basically a series of when, if, then uh, statements with a pick list of options. So I'm going to say when any type of email comes into our inbox sales, and is from this customer, finalproduction.club. That's the domain of their uh, website and of their email addresses. Then I'm going to add the tag final production. You'll notice that I can take um, multiple triggers or multiple actions and stack them into a single rule if I want to. So maybe I won't only add this tag for final production, but I'll also have it automatically assign to the account manager um, for this customer. So I know that sorry, trying to open this.
let's say I know that Chris L is the account manager for final production. I can go ahead, save this rule, and essentially anytime a message comes in with this domain, then it will automatically add this tag and assign it over to Chris L. So that's kind of a basic way that we can start to automate the sorting and organization of these messages so that they're easier to find over time. And bear with me for just a second. It looks like my screen is freezing up. There we go. So now we're back to our home screen. And the other thing I want to mention about categorizing by customer or pulling in that um, kind of historical information about previous conversations is let's say I'm um, conversing with Sarah Jones from Zesty Media Club. The panel that we didn't talk about over here, so from our navigation panel to our preview panel, to our message panel. And then we have this fourth kind of hidden panel over here. This is where our native integrations live. So contact details is one of our native integrations, where if I pull this out, it's actually going to surface every conversation that we have ever had with Sarah Jones, whether it's been with me or a different colleague of mine. So if Sarah references a conversation that she had with a rep here back in August, I can actually open activity Go back to August, click on this message, and view um, that historical thread. To verify what she's saying and just better serve her overall. Other sections you'll see of contact details include this details tab where we can actually add different attributes and almost leverage it like a lightweight CRM, a customer relationship management platform. Also add less formal notes just um, to kind of share with our colleagues uh, different information about this person. I know we've seen some customers leave notes here about um, different um, first languages. So if it's like a Spanish speaker or something like that, that can be included in the notes and then triaged by a Spanish speaking member of the team. So while some of these integrations will be native um, to front, like our calendar, scheduling, contact details, we also have the option to connect third-party um, plugins for other vendors and tools. This one is for Salesforce, for example. If I'm using that as my CRM, I can easily pull in my Salesforce information, surface it alongside this thread, and that way I have the context that I need. I can also edit these, if there were fields here, I could edit these fields in real time, and that would sync back to Salesforce, updating them in real time in our system of record. I'll take another moment to pause here and just see if there's any other questions uh, that anybody has about what we've covered so far. And to recap briefly, we've talked a little bit about the collaboration aspect of being able to comment, share drafts, and assign messages. We've talked a little about the automation and organization through our rules engine, being able to auto add tags and auto assign messages. And then we've talked a little bit about the integration piece. There's no questions right now. I'll go ahead and take automation a step further before moving into um, how analytics can serve our customers. Looks like we do have one um, message or question from Rika. Does that all only apply to email or SMS and social media as well? Great question, Rika. Um, so to clarify, when we're talking about rules, when we're talking about um, tags, all these features are applicable across channels. So not just email, also social, also SMS, also live chat. And you're welcome. Thanks for the question. So with that, like I said, I wanna kind of show you how we can take automation a step further and do it not just with uh, categorizing by type or by uh, customer, but also by urgency as it pertains to time. So going back to our settings, and again, settings is broken down on a few different levels. For all end users, they'll have access to their personal settings. Only admins will have access to company settings or team settings. So as an admin, I can go to our rules engine, and now I'll create a new SLA rule. 
Again, SLA stands for Service Level Agreement. Uh, oftentimes, it's an agreement that we have with our customers about our responsiveness. So um, how responsive are we from a timing perspective with our uh, inquiries or our responses to inquiries? And let's say we want to implement a one-hour response time. So we're, standard, we're standardizing that if a message comes in, we're going to respond um, under an hour. And um, Clayton, I'll get back to that question right after this. So what we have to do first is define the scope of this rule. Essentially, selecting the inboxes that this is going to apply to. So again, to answer Rika's question, we can make this apply to not only our email inboxes, but also SMS inbox. And that's going to be the scope of this rule. It's only applying to the sales inbox and the uh, SMS inbox. Now that we've defined the scope, we can go ahead and define our time limits. So obviously, this is a one hour SLA. And we'll keep it within business hours. But we want to give ourselves a chance to respond before that one hour mark. So maybe we'll have a warning at the 40 minute mark within business hours. So this is my ceiling, and this is kind of my window of opportunity um, to catch the message before it slips through the cracks. And once I've defined the scope and the time limit, I'll go ahead and define the actions that I want to take. So when the SLA is actually breached after an hour, we're going to add this SLA breach tag. We'll notify a teammate. Typically, this is a supervisor like Adele. We'll obviously notify the assignee so that they're aware of what's going on. And then if I click here, we can see how we can build out different escalation paths, either by auto-assigning, changing the status of the conversation, moving it to a different inbox. So some of our customers actually have uh, an escalation path of inboxes, especially support teams might have tiered inboxes, tier one, two, and three. And based on the time that a message has been unresponded, it'll be moving uh, up the tiers um, of urgency into those different inboxes. If you're using Slack, you can even do something like send a notification to Slack. So let's say, I'm going to add the SLA breach tag, notify our supervisor, notify the person that the message is assigned to, and I'll send a notification to a certain Slack channel or to maybe Adele uh, in Slack. And this is worst case scenario, we've already breached our SLA. But at the 40 minute mark, we wanna give ourselves a chance to respond. So we'll add this SLA warning tag, we'll notify the assignee, and maybe we'll send a Slack notification to the assignee or something like that. But again, it's highly customizable. You choose what your triggers are and what the actions are. And as soon as I create SLA and save this, it will be running on autopilot in the background. So always giving me those visual cues that I need to follow up with those time sensitive messages to make sure that if it's on the new business end or new opportunities are coming up, I'm being able to capture that revenue as it comes in. If it's on uh, the retention side of communicating with existing accounts, I'm able to retain those accounts um, potentially expand them over time uh, due to my excellent responsiveness and quality of service. So with that, I'll go back to my home screen. And I'll just note that if you are leveraging these um, SLA rules, it's helpful to have these tags pinned to the workspace. So that's even more visually obvious. You might even want to do something um, like edit the tag so that it has a very obvious emoji attached to it. And I would change this to fire or something like that. Um, but the screen is freezing up again, so I'll just leave that be. And I'm going to return to a question that came in earlier from Clayton, for outgoing email, is it sent with company's email address? Great question, Clayton. So let's look at a team inbox like sales.
and we'll take this message from Hector. And if we go ahead and respond, you'll notice that as a member of this inbox, the sales inbox, I can choose to respond from the sales at shared uh, email address, or I can choose to respond as myself. So if you want to add a little bit more personalization, you can respond as yourself and also use a personal uh, email signature. Otherwise, you might want to respond as sales at and then respond or include a uh, more like team or branded uh, email signature. But you can always toggle between the email signatures um, right down here. You can really have a library. So right now, there's just two to choose from. I think I heard a follow-up question. What controls do you have to channel communications to the correct inbox? For example, someone accidentally responds via their personal inbox. How do you prevent customers from emailing agents directly? So unfortunately, we can't control what our customers do. Uh, we can advise them you know, what the best practices are, that if you want to get in touch with XYZ team, then email XYZ at frontapp.com. Um, obviously, they might have their favorite agent or rep that they're going to email directly. But again, what we can do if a message comes into a personal inbox is take that message and the rep can manually just move it into the correct team inbox, maybe letting the, uh, the customer know, hey, in the future, you know, please email sales at directly. That way, we'll be able to respond to you as quickly as possible uh, in case I'm out of the office or away from my desk. Um, but again, through the rules engine, there is an action that you can add to a rule called move to, where you can say, you know, if XYZ criteria or triggers, then move to this shared inbox. So it's really up to you to define what that criteria looks like. And Stephanie's wondering, can we have an auto forward to that mailbox? Um, you could. I think one of the things that we're trying to do with the shared inbox environment and these dispositions is to eliminate the need to forward or CC or BCC on messages. Again, we want to eliminate emails about emails to strip down the volume that you have. The idea is to have less email overall and to have really only actionable emails surfacing for you to triage in real time so that your inbox can become pretty much a to-do list um, for you. So if you would like to set up auto-forwarding, you certainly can. Um, but again, I think it's helpful just to have one copy, one master copy of each message that you're provisioning access to rather than you know, copying or forwarding that message. And Stephanie, I'm not sure if I answered your question. Um, if it's coming from personal email. Are you suggesting that if a message is sent to an individual like myself, I'll always have it auto forwarded to a team inbox? Um, you could do that. I'm not, I'm not really clear on why you would want to, uh, to, be, to be transparent. I think if I had every email going to my personal inbox forwarded to the team workspace, that would pretty much eliminate any confidentiality or privacy that I would have in my personal inbox. Um, so it really depends on your team's level of comfort with, with that. And Victor is asking if I can spend a minute on the individual inbox. Absolutely, Victor. So we spent a lot of time in the team workspace, and this is the personal workspace here. Earlier, I went through, you know, if the message is assigned to you, uh, it will be viewable in this section here. Shared with me, I don't have anything open right now, so let me go ahead and find something that I can reopen. But again, shared with me is when somebody, um, when I'm not the assignee, so let's look at this one from Randolph. My colleague Dan is actually the assignee here. But at some point in the conversation, he said, at Christian, or excuse me, my colleague Stephanie said, at Christian. And when she did that, it called me into this conversation as a participant. We can see here a list of all five participants that are part of this thread. 
So essentially anytime I'm a participant supporting a conversation, but I'm not the assignee, uh, it'll be in my shared with me section. Discussions, again, is when we're trying to have an internal uh, discussion about something that's not tied to a specific email thread. So if you wanna chat about something in relation to an email, best practice is always to just comment internally back and forth within that thread. But as that's not always the case, we have this internal discussion section where we can create a channel topic, invite participants, and just have almost like a chat room internally. And lastly, our individual inbox. And again, for me, this is Christian at front.com or frontapp.com. And this is if messages were sent to me directly. So the idea of front isn't to completely eliminate the individual inbox. Uh, it's to give you access to both. So you have access to your individual inbox as well as the team inbox. So there may be cases where, you know, um, Things don't need to be triaged by the team. Um, they can be handled on a one-off basis, especially if the structure of your account management team is such that there's a one-to-one -one ratio between account managers and accounts. So if I'm the only person managing Audit Lawyer Club, then I think it's fine for Anna to just be emailing me directly. But essentially, the functionality uh, is, is very similar to, to the team workspaces. So, in terms of the statuses, we still have um, the status of open versus archived. So whether I need to take action on it, open, or whether action has already been taken, archived. Um, let's say that it ended up in my personal inbox and wasn't supposed to. Again, I can drag and drop it into a team workspace. Or if it's meant for a different person, I can go ahead and actually assign it out of my personal inbox to a different person. I can also call them into the conversation for help as a participant, same as the shared inbox. The other um, dispositions you'll see up here beyond trash is snoozed. And this is if I'm not gonna handle something right now, but I know that I can later. Maybe I'm about to step out to lunch. I'll snooze this for later today at two o'clock and it'll temporarily snooze it. It'll come back and reopen at two o'clock. No problem, Victor. I hope that uh, provided some clarity on the individual inbox. And to be clear, um, I'm trying to basically demonstrate the, the breadth of different ways of using Front. It's highly customizable, so not every personal or team workspace looks the same, and not every workflow looks the same. Um, you'll, you'll notice, for example, that um, I'm right now sorting by newest. I could also sort by oldest unreplied. So maybe my workflow starts in the morning with me looking into these inboxes and manually assigning messages to myself. And then after that phase of my uh, workday, I'll just go into my assigned to me inbox and either sort by newest or sort by oldest unreplied. And I'll start replying down each message one by one in turn, calling in colleagues as I need to for support tagging them for organization and for future reference. Um, so different ways to leverage the tool. With that, um, I know a few questions we've already addressed. Any questions that uh, folks have been saving throughout the presentation? Rika is asking about compliance. And uh, right now we are SOC 2 compliant. Um, so we're not currently HIPAA compliant, nor do we have plans or packages um, that are HIPAA compliant. Obviously it's on our roadmap, um, always working on, you know, getting those, um, those validations or those, um, those tiers of compliance. But right now SOC 2 compliance is where we are. Brianna asks, does Front send bulk email? Great question, Brianna. So I would not position Front as a 
sales or marketing automation tool. If you're looking to do, you know, pretty um, regular or heavyweight uh, automated campaigns or sequences, there are other tools, I think like Outreach and HubSpot that specialize in that. And that's not necessarily something that's on our roadmap to become highly specialized at doing. With that said, we do have a feature called sequences that is more like a mail merge. So if I go down here and click on sequences, essentially I can create a new sequence from Team Workspace. There we go. New sequence. Name the sequence. Um, say who it's going to be looking like it's coming from, the sender name. And when I click Create, I can basically upload a contact list. Um, and then I can start to build out up to 10 touches of an automated sequence. And essentially, the way that it works is you schedule each sequence to a cal specific calendar date. Um, and as soon as one of the contacts replies, it will end the sequence for them. And you'll be able to continue the conversation via front. If they don't reply, then they'll continue getting each of those subsequent touches up to 10 touches. Um, the reason I say it's kind of a lightweight solution if you're looking for something more robust is because we don't provide in-depth analytics about um, like the click-through rate of different links that you might have attached or things like that. Um, so it's more of a mail merge than a sales or marketing automation tool. Brianna, does that answer your question about bulk email? Great. Um, Victor asks, teams very often have unspoken rules of who is to respond first or forward it to someone else in the team in a common mailbox. How is that addressed in front? I think, Victor, it's by making those unspoken rules explicit and by automating them where you can. Um, I think over time, as you continue to scale, onboard new teammates and um, increase headcount, it's it's hard to scale unspoken rules. Um, so I think unspoken rules become become processes, uh, and then you need to kind of implement infrastructure that can support those processes. And it's optimal when that infrastructure can automatically implement those processes for you, so that supervisors aren't you know, spending their time um, doing that manually. Uh, they can focus on growth and other things. Um, so as far as I know, I mean, part of, part of our implementation path for new customers is to help them configure workflows in front so that those, those unspoken rules um, become workflows. And Mike asks, if we are considering front, what makes your system unique from other competitors? What are your favorite parts? Yeah, great question, Mike. Uh, I think the three things I always come back to are collaboration, automation, and analytics. And analytics isn't something I spent time on today, but I'll just give you a brief sense of what that looks like, since that's kind of the, the third of, of the triad. So I know we already went over those SLA rules. So if I bounce over to our analytics here, kind of see just a team dashboard. Um, of uh, the volume of a certain time frame. And we can see that within this week, we didn't breach the SLAs at all. So that's this was a good week from that standpoint. If we look at the team, this is pretty much a leaderboard, not only of volume, but also of responsiveness uh, for per teammate. Um, so essentially, once it loads, we'll be able to see the top reaction time, person handling the most conversations, the most replies, and we'll see basically a breakdown per person of their responsiveness, efficacy, and productivity. Productivity goes into a responsiveness from a team level, but we can actually create custom reports to drill into specific customers, specific teammates, specific SLA rules to see how we're trending over time. And first, when you have access to these analytics, you can benchmark against where you're at today. And from there, you can start to kind of build a plan for, OK, where we want to be tomorrow, what processes do we need to put in place to get there? And then how do we configure those processes as workflows in front to make sure that we're making incremental progress day over day? 
Um, so with that, I think it's just Front's ability to kind of um, adapt to your OKRs, KPIs, to your goals, to your needs, rather than giving you a system and saying, okay, we need you to conform to this framework, um, which can take a leap of faith in some changes. Change management is no easy task, and we understand that. So we try to make it as easy as possible. Uh, Mike, did that answer that question? And a question from Clayton. Would you recommend using front and the only interface as the only interface to these communications, or should it be used side by side with Outlook? Yeah, so the idea is not to be using Outlook. Um, there's Nick answering the question for me. Thanks, Nick. Nick says, as a user, I would heartily recommend using Front exclusively and dropping Outlook. And um, that really is what we recommend as well. Um, I think if you're hopping back and forth, you're going to be running into you know, the same problems. You're adding Front as a step rather than using Front to remove a bunch of the steps that were taking up time previously. Um, so the idea is to deprecate Outlook or Gmail and start using Front on the individual inbox and the team inbox levels. Um, and just from a architectural standpoint, the reason that that's, it might sound crazy, but it's actually pretty easy to do, is because we're not replacing, if you're using Outlook, we're not replacing Microsoft Office 365 as your email host, as your email provider. Uh, Office 365 would continue to be your host, your provider, and Front is simply sitting on top of that as a layer. So we're syncing with it. We have a bi-directional two-way sync with Gmail and Office 365 that allows us to import those emails, import your uh, labels or your folders, and really just um, start implementing. Thanks for that question, um, Clayton. Rika asks, can you speak about the website chat and how it looks on both customer side and agent side? Definitely, Rika. So let me hop back here. And here's our website chat. Uh, this is what it looks like on our side. Essentially, in the preview window, each message will thread with um, the name of the visitor. Uh, if we have their contact details saved already. Uh, if we don't, then it's helpful to have a welcome message. Um, so basically, you can populate. And if you go to frontapp.com, you can kind of see what the widget looks like. It's basically a logo on the bottom right-hand side of your screen. So you can customize it with your own logo, customize it with your own welcome message. Um, and then a website visitor can click on it and start chatting with a live agent. And the welcome message might ask them what their email address is so that you could follow up with them later or just identify them um, within front. Um, but that's also something that the agent can surface in the conversation. But anyway, like I was saying, you'll see who it is, kind of the beginning of their um, the body of the message. And we'll always have it time stamped, obviously. Once we start replying, in the composer, we'll be able to leverage uh, emojis, uh, attach files, populate with canned responses for FAQs as well. And again, we'll still be able to call in colleagues to participate, to comment, to share drafts. And we'll still be able to leverage the different uh, send options. So if I just populate here with our getting started resources, canned response, I might share the draft with somebody else, but then I can go ahead and send. Uh, Clayton asks, can you export the analytics for further customization of reports? Yes, so uh, in analytics, at the click of a button, you can export. What we see some of our customers doing, so Front has an open API, and if your business has development resources, what we've seen some of our customers do is um, create a custom, custom sync where basically, rather than manually exporting the analytics, uh, they're periodically auto exporting the analytics um, to their you know, internal system so that they can further analyze that information. So again, Clayton, two options there. One is to manually export the analytics 
uh, at the click of a button. Two is to invest some engineering resources to auto export those analytics um, to your, your system of record. Okay. Victor asks, can canned responses be populated from the knowledge base? Great question, Victor. Um, so currently we don't have a way to, to auto import uh, canned responses from, from third party systems, even vendors that we integrate with. Um, in terms of pulling them in through the open API, um, that's honestly beyond my scope of knowledge. Uh, Victor, what I can do is um, I can escalate that to one of my solutions engineers to just to ask if, if we have any customers doing that currently or how it could be done. Um, also happy to share our uh, doc, uh, API documentation. And actually, if you wanna view it later today, dev.frontup.com is where you'll find our API documentation. Um, so you, you can review that or uh, share it internally with your engineers and they can take a look. Awesome, thanks Victor. Sorry I couldn't shed more light on that workflow. In terms of uh, how different systems can integrate together though, I think it is important to note that um, there are native integration workflows that are very powerful. So for example, um, if you're leveraging Salesforce for an example as, a, as your CRM, something that you could do is uh, create through our rules engine an auto assignment rule. But the trigger uh, would be based on something like account ownership or contact ownership in Salesforce. So there are ways natively to get your systems to talk to each other via front. And then again, we do have an open API. So there are ways to customize workflows that aren't native to front. Um, any other questions? Current time here is 10.53 AM Pacific. And uh, I do have a hard stop at 11 a.m. Pacific, so just about seven minutes left. I know there's still some people on, um, so plenty of time to get your questions in. I'll be here for the next seven minutes or so. Clayton asks if Front integrates with Dynamics 365, Microsoft Teams. Um, so in terms of Microsoft Teams, I think one of, the, one of the values of Front is really consolidating your internal and external communications into Front, into the single platform. Um, and so that's kind of what I was touching on earlier um, when we were moving between the different shared and personal inboxes and then discussions. So in this case, again, you'd be deprecating Outlook for external communication. So you'd be deprecating Outlook or use of Outlook for email. You'd also be deprecating use of Microsoft Teams and implementing internal discussions. Um, is it possible to use Microsoft Teams and separately use Front? Yeah, it's possible. Uh, do I know of any customers we have that are doing that right now? I personally don't, but that doesn't mean that it's not happening. Um, so we don't integrate with Microsoft Teams, uh, nor do we integrate with Dynamics 365. Um, if, you're, uh, if you're an engineer or a developer, Clayton, I definitely recommend taking a look at the um, API documentation up there on the thread dev.frontapp.com. And that might shed some light on what's possible in terms of building out a custom integration with either of those um, Dynamics or Microsoft Teams, those Office 365 tools. 
Um, but that's that's all I can really share about that. Rika asks, how long is customer conversation history stored for? Um, so your customer conversation history won't won't be auto deleted. Um, and again, we're not the host, we're not the provider. Um, so if you're using Gmail or if you're using Office 365, um, that's really who's who's storing the data. Um, but in terms of like how long will you be able to query for and find those historical conversations, uh, as long as you have front, you should be able to find them. Um, we don't have like any sort of, you know, auto delete at a certain, I know, I know for example, um, there are other tools out there that have a capacity. So if you're using, um, I think uh, Salesforce for SMS for texting, they can only store 300 um, conversations at a time. And in order to store additional conversations, you need to manually delete certain conversations to stay within or under that 300 conversation threshold. Uh, front, we don't have anything like that. So no conversation capacity uh, and from a space and from a, a temporal standpoint, Rika, no problem. Great. Stand by for a couple more minutes here for any final questions. It does look like we still have um, about 10 folks on board. I'm curious for those folks who are still on board. Um, today, I think, was kind of focused on that sales inbox. Um, but obviously we have customer success teams, support teams, operation teams, finance, all types of teams leveraging front, really anybody who uses um, email or communicates with customers on a regular basis. So if there are any uh, use cases that I didn't touch on today, please let me know and I'd be happy to touch on them. Looks like we have a couple more. Oh, you're welcome, Brianna. Thanks for joining. A couple people typing in. Getting some thank yous. Thank you all for joining. Glad you found it insightful, Victor. Last chance, last call for any final questions. I think we'll be closing out. Thanks everybody for joining. Please do follow up with us if, if any other questions come to mind. And uh, pleasure speaking with y'all. You too, Rika. <laughs>